David started Saddle Creek purely by chance and because he needed to feed his family. Uh, he and his brother Chuck had uh, inherited the Lions Bag Company down on Fish Hatchery Road. They bought and sold used burlap bags. And when burlap bags started giving way to plastic and paper packaging, uh, Dad decided that he needed to get into something else. At the time, he was partners with Carl Strang in Winter Haven. They built a small building, 12,000 square feet, down on uh, Saddle Creek Road. And that is literally the way Saddle Creek got into the warehousing business. In the early, early beginning days, after I had started, I found that uh, everyone did pretty well everything. Um, David drove a forklift, I drove a forklift, though know, I was the accountant. Uh, David, of course, is president, you know. And like I say, everybody pitched in, unloading trucks, unloading rail cars, uh, dealing with stuff in the office. It was just, uh, there was a small group of us, so everybody did everything, everybody knew everybody. He worked hard, he would leave home early, he would come home late, but he always had time for us when he got home. One of the things that was obvious to me and I think was one of the first priorities for David was his family. He, he loved his family and I loved the fact that anytime he talked about Connie or his kids, um, his eyes sparkled. One of the characteristics of David that I valued most was his deep faith and then his love for his family. We never once had a conversation that he didn't talk about his faith and his family. David was very committed to growing the company. And I think the decisions he made, including going back to the early 90s when he made the decision to begin to bring in additional professional management to run the company were all centered around his very clear understanding that for a company like Saddle Creek, if you're not growing, you're rapidly shrinking. I feel David always took a reasonable salary out of the company, and the reason why he did was uh, he always wanted to invest back in the company. We're, we've been fortunate as a company that uh, we've never had to go to outside investors. Uh, we were able to use our own borrowing power internally. We were able to do this because of the frugalness of him not uh, taking a lot of money out of companies. As, as you see in a lot of closely held companies, the ownership bleeds the company down tremendously. David didn't do that. He was passionately committed to the business and it wasn't so much the hard work, but it was the excitement and engagement of the business that really motivated him. He, he was very comfortable with customers. He was very comfortable with whoever he met. I've seen him discuss things with the guy on the forklift, and yet I've seen him go to, to uh, customers where he's talking to a president of a, of a major corporation. Same comfort level, same uh, tone in his voice, same language, just very comfortable in that. He was visionary. I, th I think that you can look at David and see that that's the way I want to be. I want to not settle for the ordinary, but there are extraordinary things we can do with the resources of people and time and talents and a healthy business that can make a positive difference in the world. It strikes me that anyone who would study the history of Saddle Creek and look at David's leadership, it was inspired, it was visionary, it was filled with hard work. He often said that one of the many blessings he had had was that his avocation was also his vocation. And that's few, few of us can ever say that. David's greatest interest and passion was for the people who work for the company. He treated hourly associates, the newest hourly associates got treated the same way as a vice president. One of the early uh, lessons that I got from, from David was that you've got to take care of your employees. And it's the employees that are on the floor that are doing the frontline work. You take care of those employees, they will take care of you, the company will take care of itself. More times than I probably know that he would forego his own paycheck every week in order to pay the employees. First started here, it was very small. Um, we just had this office, we had the one in Macon, and then we had the one in Orlando. And I don't know if it was maybe that year or the year after, the recession hit. And Mr. Lyons had a meeting with all of us in the break room to say, nobody's going to be fired. You may push a broom, you may do something that you not, don't normally do, but nobody will be fired. I think really he cared about setting an example. And one example I really remember was uh, several years ago, and the company was starting to prosper and do better. And he came to me with uh, an invoice 
uh, to, for reimbursement for uh, travel, and he had traveled first class. And in that, he handed me a check, and he said, here's a check for the difference. I said, why are you paying the difference? David says, I don't expect anyone else to be flying first class, and if I'm gonna fire first class, then I will pay the company the difference. And it probably took uh, two years before me, I finally convinced him that David, you own the company, company can afford it, nobody's gonna think a thing about you flying first class and fly first class. Mr. Lyons treated us all as family and made it very, very clear that each and every one of us was just as important. It didn't matter if you mopped the floor or if you sat next to him in the office. It, everyone had the same value to him. David wanted to relate to people on a personal basis. He would frequently, on his own, grab one of the golf carts around here, jump in it, and just walk around and, and talk to folks and find out how the operation was going and let them know how interested he was in not only the company and the particular customer, but in them as, as individuals working here. He taught me to make a decision first and ask for forgiveness later. And I have really, for the 30 years I have been here, I have done that. He taught you that and he always treated you fair. David really cared about the family of, not only his family, but the family of his associates. You could tell the true tone in his voice that he really did care and was asking not just to pass the time of day, but was wanting to know what was going on. What I remember the most, what it sticks with me the most about Mr. Lyons is my husband and I got married on his birthday without knowing it. So every year on his birthday, I would say happy birthday and he would say happy anniversary. At our 10th anniversary, we went to a local restaurant and he was there with all of his family and when it was time for us to leave, the server said he had picked up our tab for us. So that's something that just warmed my heart. But that's the kind of a man he was. He was just a giving, kind man. My mother worked here, and uh, she was part-time, and me and my brother had broke down in Georgia in a truck with a U-Haul, and she told him that uh, he, she had to take off to come get us, and he asked where we were. And she told him, and he said, no, I've got a truck coming back from Macon. Uh, tell him to drop the U-Haul, and I'll send the truck over there. And he loaded us up, brought us home. Dad tried to give the driver a tip. He wouldn't take it because he said, no, Mr. Lyons takes care of me. And that just means a lot. He was just really down to earth, easy to talk to, not like some big you know, owner of some huge company that you don't even know what he looks like. So he always treated us like family. Our customers don't come from Polk County. They come from all around the country and all around the world. Uh, so investing in the community is done here because we ha he had and we all share that sense of responsibility. I think David Lyons had a profound impact on the city of Lakeland and the corporate community. Certainly the success of Saddle Creek has been, has received nationwide attention and I think that brought much attention to the Lakeland community. What I learned about him quickly was that he was involved in a number of things that were dear to his heart and he believed in. And I would hear again and again, uh, David Lyons helped us with this, David Lyons helped us with that. I think if you have a legacy, that's one of the things you want to hear is that people remember that you are part of making the community better. He was obviously engaged in a lot of charitable activities. He was very, very supportive of the educational community, whether it was for Southern, uh, the new Florida Polytechnic and the investment we're making there. There are so many occasions when people have come to me and said, they knew my dad, they know my dad, but he helped them when they needed it the most. He was just always there, always caring, um, always looking for other people, you know, not, not just himself, or he was just a caring man. He was a leader, a leader not just of Saddle Creek, but obviously a, of his church, of his community. We are all very, very blessed to have had him in our lives and to have been able to watch him take this small Florida business into the empire that it is now. The company, as you're well aware, has grown dramatically over the years. 
and I really attribute that growth to the associates of Saddle Creek Corporation, the people that do the work every day in the warehouse and in the offices are the ones that are really responsible for the success of our company. I am proud to be associated with each and every one of you and I hope that you all are proud to be associated with Saddle Creek Corporation.